if you don't fly with an OSD on your copter, I feel safe saying that you're, you're in the minority these days. Uh, there used to be a lot of good reasons to not put an OSD on your copter. One is that the OSDs were big, and that was more or less solved with the micro minim OSD. But that leads us to the next problem with OSDs, which was that they were fragile. Micro minim OSDs, they would, they would pop at the drop of a hat, a voltage spike, or they would brown out at the drop of a hat and leave you looking at nothing when you wanted to be looking where you were going. It also used to be the case that OSDs were kind of complicated to wire up. If you wanted anything more than basic voltage sensing, you needed to have an external current sensor and maybe an RSSI input with a filter on the RSSI input, all this nonsense. Well, that has more or less gone away. These days, we have integrated all-in-one uh, OSD boards, generally integrated with PDBs is how I've seen them, and they make it very easy to put an OSD on your copter. On top of that, they are generally pretty robust uh, in terms of power filtering and crashworthiness. Nothing is bulletproof, nothing's completely crashproof, but they're pretty good. And so the, the, the hurdles to getting an OSD on your copter, I think, are much lower than they used to be. And that leads us to this video. I'm going to show you some OSDs that maybe you haven't seen. Now, you're familiar, I'm sure, if you watch my channel, with my longtime uh, sweetheart, <laughs> the Red Rotor RROSD. But the Red Rotor RROSD is getting a little long. Well, it's not getting a little long in the tooth. It is long in the tooth. It's been long in the tooth for a while. Uh, the layout of the board with, the, with, with where the pads are is not the best. And there are other complaints that people have about that board. So I'm going to show you some alternatives to the Red Rotor RROSD, including something new from Red Rotor that you may have seen going around the internet. If not, this will be your first look at it. But we're going to start with these products from Holybro. Now, the board I'm holding in my hand right now is not an OSD. This is the Kakute Flight Controller. Now, this has not got an OSD, it's not a PDB, it's not an all-in-one, it's just a basic flight controller. And I just brought it out because I think it's kind of cool that Holy Bro has, this is the Kakute flight controller, fine. This is the Kakute all-in-one, which is a flight controller, OSD, and PDB. And I talked about this in my all-in-one roundup. And this is the Holy Bro PDB and OSD. So I think it's really cute. You can sort of have your pick. They've got whatever you want from their product line. They've got you covered. You want a flight controller? Got it. You want an all-in-one PDB OSD P uh, flight controller? Got it. You want you want to your, use your own flight controller with uh, PDB and OSD? Got it. Specs for this board are a 120 amp current sensor. It's got a 2 amp 12 volt output and an 800 milliamp 5 volt output. And those are decent specs, especially the 2 amps on 12 volts and uh, the 800 milliamps on 5 volts, if it's an honest rating, is actually going to be enough to even run some more power-hungry 5-volt peripherals. You know, it used to be that most of the peripherals you'd see would be 12-volt peripherals, and you'd basically just run your flight controller off of 5 volts. But things like your camera and your video transmitter, they'd run off of 12 volts or even VBAT. But these days we're seeing more and more electronics that seem to be designed to run straight off of 5 volts on the assumption that you're not going to have a secondary regulator on board. And if you're going to do that, well, <laughs> it's really easy to get into territory where even the 800 milliamps that a board like this will nominally provide is not enough, especially if you're using a 5 volt video transmitter like the TBS Unify. But with 800 milliamps of output power, you're definitely in a mode where if you want to run anything more than your flight controller, your receiver, maybe your camera, maybe a couple other things, you're going to be all right. The 800 milliamps is also nice because it is often the case that the uh, current rating of the regulators on these boards is a little optimistic. Now I do see here that we've got these inductors and that suggests that these are switching regulators. I mean that, that strongly implies that these are switching regulators. And the, the, the specs for a switching regulator are more likely to be honest and the reason for that is with a linear regulator, the regulator's ability to dissipate heat is the primary limitation on its current rating. And so uh, oftentimes the paper, the paper spec is very, very optimistic. It assumes that you've got a heat sink and you've got good airflow and that it's not 80 degrees outside and so on and so on. Switching regulators, the specs are, are relatively independent of those factors and it's easier to get a, a fixed number and just stick by it. One of the things that some people complain about the RROSD, other people see it as a feature, is that it does not interface with your flight controller at all. So adjusting PIDs, adjusting rates, all of the other things you can do with MWOSD 
to interface it with your flight controller. You can't do that with the ROSD. This board has minim OSD on board, and so you can see here I've got the TX and RX pins. We can connect it to a UART, and we can do all of those things that I just talked about. So if you're looking for an ROSD-like board, but you want the ability to interface with your flight controller, the Holybro PDB OSD V1.2 may be a good choice for you. Now, if you are astute, you have been looking at this and saying, where is the USB connector? How do I flash this if I want to update the firmware? And the answer is that there's no USB connector. Rather, there's this connector here, and it comes with this plug here. And this plug goes to your FTDI adapter and is used to flash the board. I have checked and I can confirm that the TX and RX pads here on this on this little header on top are the same as the TX and RX lines on this wire header here. And that's I was hoping that they would be separate so that you could talk to the flight controller using these pads and then you could use this header to configure or flash the board without any conflict. That is not the case. If you have a flight controller that uses UART1 to talk on, to the USB connection, then you're not going to want to put this board on UART1 because they'll conflict. What's this? I can hear you saying. This is not an OSD. This is a video transmitter. Yes, you're right, it's a video transmitter. But it's also an OSD. This is a pre-production version of a new product that is coming soon from UBAD, the makers of the LaForge. Now, I want to warn you that this is a pre-production product. Some details are going to change, like I've been told that the button location is going to change on the final production versions. And also, the final production version is going to have a metal case here. So this, what you're seeing here, is not reflective of the final product, but this is too cool not to show it to you. So this is a video transmitter with an OSD built in. And I got to tell you, when I, when I heard about the Aura OSD and them putting the OSD into the PDB, I thought, that's really smart. That's a smart place to put it because that's where you want your current sensor anyway. Now, this doesn't have a current sensor, and it doesn't want one. UBAD's philosophy is we're going to make the product we want to make, and, uh, and if you don't like it, don't buy it. <laughs> so they've decided that this product, there will be another similar product coming someday that will have a current sensor. This one does not have a current sensor. It's not going to have a current sensor. And at that point, if you don't need a current sensor anyway, well, heck, why not just stick the OSD into the video transmitter? Where, and then you just don't, you know, you don't need an extra board. And that's pretty darn clever. And this is the same sort of philosophy that Furious FPV have put into their Passado. The difference is that Furious FPV said, let's take something that looks kind of like an OSD board and put a video transmitter on it. And UBAD have said, let's take something that looks kind of like a video transmitter and put an OSD into it. And that, my friends, brings me to the final entry in this showcase. It is something that has great sentimental value to me. Red Rotor was one of the f was the first vendor to ever give me anything as a sponsorship not like a formal sponsorship a long long time ago before i really even had a youtube channel i flew a red rotor strider frame and once upon a time i couldn't find spare parts for the frame they were just not for sale and i reached out to red rotor and tony at red rotor said ah don't worry about it he sent me some spare arms or a spare plate or whatever and and i've worked with them as my channel has grown uh, and I have been really disappointed and kind of sad that the Red Rotor ROSD hasn't really kept up with the times in a lot of ways. Well, guess what? There's now a Red Rotor ROSD V2. This board addresses many of the complaints that people had with the ROSD V1. For one thing, it has moved the ESC pads to the corners, which people really hated having to run all the wires over to one side of the board. Another complaint about the Red Rotor V1 was that the voltage regulator didn't have a great current rating, and I have pushed uh, Red Rotor to switch to a switching regulator, no pun intended, because switching regulators give you much better current output for the size. Uh, and Red Rotor's position is that the filtering provided by a linear regulator is more desirable than the additional current rating of a switching regulator. Red Rotor have done something very clever with their regulators on this board, and that is, it used to be that this board came with a 5-volt and a 12-volt regulator. 
Now the board comes with a 5 volt and a 10 volt regulator. And the advantage of that is that the 10 volt regulator will filter the power even on a 3S setup whereas a 12 volt regulator is not filtering power on a 3S setup because a 3S setup is basically always gonna be below the cutout voltage of the regulator. The current rating for the 10 volt regulator is 400 milliamps on three or four S power, 250 milliamps on five S power, and a paltry 150 milliamps on 6S, basically useless on 6S. The five volt regulator is rated for 600 milliamps and the board as a whole is rated for 150 amps. The current sensor is calibrated to 150 amps. That was another complaint with the V1 that it only went up to 100 amps and some people were pulling more than that. So let's wrap up. You've got the Hollybro PDB and OSD. Costs about 20 bucks and it uses MWOSD. You've got the Furious FPV Passato, which is a video transmitter and OSD. No PDB here. Uh, the video transmitter is controllable from within the OSD and uh, it also has a nice pit mode feature where when you first power it up, it doesn't turn on until you push the button. You can also switch it on and off with an aux channel from your transmitter, so that's pretty cool. This one is about 60 bucks, which I think makes it a hard sell compared to some of the other stuff here. But I suppose if you were to say it's a premium video transmitter, if you were to assume that the video transmitter was worth 40 or 45 bucks, which is what you'll pay for something like a TBS Unify or an Immersion RC Tramp, then maybe this board is worth it. You're getting the OSD for not much more than that. The Red Rotor ROSD V2 runs about 30 bucks. It is a standalone proprietary OSD. It is not uh, MWOSD. It does not interface with the flight controller. You cannot adjust your PIDs or anything like that. On the other hand, there's no screwing around with configuring and adjusting and calibrating and yada, yada, yada. You basically just install it and then it works and it's good to go. And then finally, we've got the UBAD OSD and video transmitter. This is from their new uh, high-end, but not quite highest-end line of products called the DMT line. Uh, this is not out yet. The, uh, the estimated pricing is around 40 bucks, which when you consider that 40 bucks is what you'll pay for a premium video transmitter like the, uh, like the Unify or the, or the uh, Immersion RC Tramp, you're getting a, basically a free OSD, and if you, I don't, we can't speak to the hardware quality, but UBAT is certainly known for putting out uh, high-quality hardware and standing behind it. So I think we can expect this will have a pretty good reputation. And there you go. There is your showcase of some new options that are coming out or already out on the market for OSDs and PDBs and video transmitters, etc. Basically, this is just me trying to... Clear my bench. I have too much stuff. I need to tell you about it. I can't devote hours and hours to each of it like I normally would like to. And now you know, and happy flying.